Find Your Way Home. This is Christine and Christine. Today is a very, very serious topic that Christine and I have been wanting to address. And I believe it's because neither of us want the world to be fooled. And right now, I don't know about you, Christine, but I see so many people being fooled to their own detriment and to the detriment of others. And the mastermind behind this, of course, is the father of all lies, the enemy of the human soul, the enemy of the church. And we want to go in depth in this show regarding the man of lawlessness, regarding the Antichrist, regarding the one whom scripture says is to come, may already be here, who is the fullness of evil. Basically, a man, not a woman, not that a woman couldn't be, <laughs> but scripture says it's a man who is filled with evil and who has evil intentions for humanity. And we want to talk about this because in case this man is acting behind the scenes or will come forth in our lifetime or maybe in the generation to follow and there's still YouTube, there's still a video to see, we don't want anyone following him, getting fooled by his machinations, getting fooled by his deceptions because that's what he's all about. So are you ready, Christine? Do you have anything to say before I dive into scripture? Um, I think I just want to make sure that we're clear. And we could talk about it later, I suppose. But I, what keeps coming to mind, even before we went on the air, was a friend of mine who hates or didn't like one of the political, one of our recent presidents. And she goes, well, you know who I think is the Antichrist. And I said, because this is a dear friend who we're always on, uh, we love each other, but we're on opposite sides politically. And I said, well, you know, Ellen, um, she knows I talk about her. We've, I said, you know, the Antichrist isn't going to be that president you think it was, because a lot of people hated him. And it might, you know, maybe the president that everyone likes us, but you will know it's the Antichrist when we agree, because this man will win over everyone. So if there's a president or a leader in the world that's hated by even any, that's not him. So that was the thing that came as going, just knowing scripture, that that's the starting point, no scripture. And then we can really siphon out, you know, it's not this person, it's not that person, but we must be aware of what the Bible says he's going to look like, be like. That's a really good point. And uh, we know that he's not going to look like a red spear holding. What? Oh, did, did you did you already meet him? I thought he was going to have a pitchfork. Is he your father-in-law? No, no, no. We shouldn't. <laughs> Sorry. So let's look at scripture. John, the Apostle John, wrote about the Antichrist. He's the main writer. St. Paul also refers to him. So potentially does the book of Daniel. So here we have the first letter of John on the screen. Children, it is the last hour. And just as you heard that Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have appeared. From this we know that it is the last hour. So in their time, they believed that he was coming soon. Right. Well, <laughs> soon may not have been in their time, but we'll find out soon may be in our day. So John knew, we're presuming because he was so close to Jesus, that Jesus told the apostles about this man. And St. Paul elaborates on him further in Second Thessalonians. Let no one in any way deceive you, for it will not come unless the apostasy comes first. Another clue that there will be a vast falling away from the faith. That's what apostasy means. And the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction. Another clue. He's going to be revealed. People are going to know who he is, and he's going to be a destroyer. That may not be apparent right away. Of course it wouldn't be, otherwise people wouldn't accept him. Who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called god or object of worship. So he will want to be the one that people pay attention to. So that he takes his seat in the temple of God, displaying himself as being God. 
Now, this could mean the Catholic Church. This could mean the chair of Peter in the future. We'll see. But if you were the Antichrist, Christine, and I'm just presuming you're not, you know, you let me know, where would you, where would you want to be? Where would you want to sit? On the chair of Peter, because if he is the ape of the church and the Catholic Church is the church that Christ ordained, it's got an organized leader. He wants everything that God gave to the church. He wants to be in charge of it. So he wants an altar. He wants a, the chair of Peter. He wants, that's my perception. He wants a mass. That's why Satanists have the black mass. They're copying everything that the Catholic Church does because the Antichrist, Satan can't create anything. He can only mimic what God has created. And so we'll see. But that is said in scripture right there that he, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God. And in the prophet of Daniel, it may refer to the Antichrist when he speaks of beasts in a figurative way. He's a, got a mouth uttering great boasts, okay? We'll recognize him because there, there will be a false humility. It's actually a lot of boasting. And in Revelation, it says, And the whole earth was amazed and followed after the beast. So it's likely that in the book of Revelation, the beast refers to this Antichrist figure. And so this is not someone, therefore, that nobody knows about. So we also see in the book of Revelation more words about this beast. Book of Revelation chapter 13 verse 7 says, It was also given to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given to him over every tribe, people, language, and nation. Once again, the universality of this figure. All who live on earth will worship him. Well, almost all, right? Because then it says, Everyone whose name has not been written since the foundation of the world in the book of life of the Lamb who has been slaughtered, i.e. Jesus. The yes. book of life contains those who at the last minute or all of their lives or at some point decided to follow For the Jesus. Lord. Yeah. So that puts one's name in the book of life. But those who don't do that, those who don't make that final decision for God are going to be subsumed into this deception. So it says, if anyone has an ear, let him hear. And I think that's what we're trying to do today. Listen, this is something to be aware of. If anyone is destined for captivity, to captivity he goes. So those who fight this beast could be led into captivity. That would be a result. Also, if anyone yeah. kills with the sword, with the sword he must be killed. If anyone is destined for martyrdom, which if done with a disposition of heart, of love toward the Lord, is a straight shot to heaven. So as horrible as that sound, from heaven's perspective, it's a straight ticket into the right. heart of joy, of God, of eternal life. Here is the perseverance and the faith of the saints. So the saints, it, this passage is very important because it says, he's been given power to make war with the saints. So he's going to be against holy Christians. That's going to be one of his priorities. And yeah. they will suffer. Okay. Because holy Christians are the ones coming in the way. Holy Christians are the ones that are fighting. Holy Christians are the ones that will be saying, not so quick, don't do that. Are you really going to trust that person or that media figure? Or, And he's going to hate that because he wants to get us out of his way so that those who are lukewarm can just keep walking like a puppet. Yeah, he's going to hate the distrust of, of anyone and especially Christians who bear the mark of Christ. And so then we also see here, then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and he spoke as a dragon. 
he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence, and he makes the earth and those who live on it worship the first beast whose fatal wound was healed. We're not sure what that is. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down out of the sky to the earth in the presence of the people, and he deceives those who live on earth because of the signs which it was given him to perform in the presence of the beast. So there's two beasts. We're looking at the characteristics of these beasts, okay? Because therein lies the characteristics of the Antichrist. Signs, signs to draw people in. Of course, as you said, aping God. God has used signs, still used signs to get our attention. And then it says, and he causes all, the small and the great, rich and the poor and the free and the slaves to be given a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads. And he decrees that no one will be able to buy or sell except the one who has the mark, either the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Once again, St. John is writing in such a way as to say, pay attention. Yes. If you, if you are reading this, listen, pay attention. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for the number is that of a man. Henceforth, we hear of the man again, and his number 666. So we hear of the mark of the beast, and there's not enough time in this show to go into that, but there are signs that we could do in a future show that give details of some things that are already happening on earth that seem to be trending towards such a thing, such technology, that is already on such people and could be used for nefarious purposes. Of course, could be used for good, but in the future, perhaps not. Yeah, I'd like to add, and I think you've said it, but I just need to stress because I've heard some speakers out there or people saying, it's going to be not really a man, it's going to be a spirit. He'll be evil and it'll be evil things we do. And look at the evil in the world. The Bible clearly says there will be an individual man. So he will be walking and talking. So it won't be a spirit. He will be leading all these things. So uh, again, it seems obvious to some, but not to others. So keep your eyes open for a man. Yes, and so let's move to the saints and the catechism about this particular man. It says, before Christ's second coming, the church must pass through a final trial that will shake the faith of many believers. And perhaps we're seeing the beginnings of such a trial. And this doesn't mean that the second coming of Christ is the be is is succeeding the events to come in an immediate fashion. That's later on at the end of the of time. But before at, while we're still here, this is going to happen, says the catechism. The persecution that accompanies her pilgrimage on earth will unveil the mystery of iniquity in the form of religious deception offering men an apparent solution to their problems at the price of apostasy from the truth. So that means that there's going to be problems and that people are seeking a solution and that a deceptive answer is going to be given to them. They just have to apostatize and accept a different truth, which unfortunately is already widely accepted anyway today. Right. So the supreme religious deception is that of the Antichrist, so that he is the supreme deception, okay? A pseudo-messianism by which man glorifies himself in place of God and of his Messiah come in the flesh. A major doctor in the church, St. Augustine, told us, that which there is no doubt, he said, is this, that Christ will not come to judge the quick and the dead unless Antichrist, his adversary, first comes to seduce those who are dead in soul. Okay, so this is extremely dangerous, is it not, Christine? Those who are dead in soul already are just fair game. They're easy prey. And if we look at how we as Christians, Catholic Christians as well, can can be deceived it's it's very scary to think well we could be deceived too but those who are dead in soul this is a huge deception so it says between saint augustine and saint thomas aquinas in the eighth century came saint john damascene so he likewise stated during the first part of his reign of his tyranny rather 
He, the Antichrist, plays more the part of sanctity. If St. John Damascene has hit this on the nail, that we can expect someone playing the role of someone very holy. But when he gains complete control, he persecutes the church of God and reveals all his wickedness. So therefore, right, we'd, we'd reject him right away if he started attacking Christians, but we have to be aware he's not going to do that. That reminds me of something that Father Michel Rodrigue said at one point, that when Satan comes and he tries to take on another form or look holy, there's always something that's not, not right. So he might have this awesome looking appearance, but you'll notice, you know, there's a cloven foot or there is, you know, a something broken in that image now does that mean that's what we should look for no but what that said to me is that when the antichrist comes and he tries to mock um, he's going to try to come and look holy but we have to keep our eyes open for what exactly is not holy so if he's speaking humility but we'll see things that act more like you know maybe proud or boastful or like keep your eyes open so go ahead and tell us about saint hildegard of bingen here so St. Hildegard said about the Antichrist, there's just a few de details that she's given. She said, after the birth of Antichrist, heretics will preach their false doctrines undisturbed, resulting in Christians having doubts about their holy Catholic faith. After his birth, false teachers and doctrines will appear, followed by wars, famines, and pestilence. His mother will seldom let anyone see him, and yet, by magic art, she will manage to gain the love of the people for him. And lastly, she says, when he has grown to full manhood, he will publicly announce a hostile doctrine on religion. He will lure and attract the people to himself by granting them complete exemption from the observance of all divine and ecclesiastical commandments by forgiving them their sins and requiring of them only their belief in his divinity. You know, that really struck me too, because we've just been through a period of time where churches were shut down. And we are told here that the Antichrist will grant us complete exemption from the observance of all divine commandments just makes me think, how will I know? But be aware, you know, no, you don't have to do this. You don't have to worship that. You don't have to obey that commandment. That one was just metaphorical. All I know is I'm going, okay, what do I know now about the faith? What do I know now about the commandments? What do I know now about the church attending mass? And really want to plant that in my heart so that if the Antichrist comes and he tries to tell me I don't have to go to mass and I don't have to go to confession. I don't have to receive the Eucharist. That's where my feelers, my antenna will go up. So um, when St. Uh, Hildegard said that, I was, you know, it alerted me. And then she goes on to say, he will ally himself with the kings, the princes, and the powerful ones of the earth. He will condemn humility and it will extol all the doctrines of pride. His magic art will feign the most astonishing prodigies. So that's from scripture, right? He will align himself with the powerful. This will not be a peasant coming forth. And this will not be someone who says, oh, let us just be humble. Let us be pure of heart. Let us serve one another. There will be, right. there'll be a sense of pride a sense of follow me i've got i've got it going on and you can too <laughs> that's kind of what i meant right? right he's gonna look like he's humble there's gonna be something that keeps the cameras on him that's like is that exactly humility another thing that hildegard continued the antichrist will grant entire freedom from the commandments of god and the church and he will permit everyone to live as his passions dictate. By doing so, he hopes to be acknowledged by the people as deliverer from the yoke and as the cause of prosperity in the world. Religion he will endeavor to make convenient. He will say that you need not fast and embitter your life by renunciation. It will suffice to love God. He will preach free love 
and tear asunder family ties. I mean, there's just so much in that one, Christine. I just, he's delivering us from the yoke. Um, he's the cause of all prosperity in the world. You know, I'm going to make religion convenient. He's going to take all the suffering out of religion. Not that people think of religion as suffering, but, you know, Christianity as it's known today, the Lord says, pick up your cross. What she is saying here is he's just going to kind of say, don't worry about that silly little cross thing. Just follow your passions. And as you and I see, we're living in a world now that is dictated by feelings and passions. If you feel a certain way, that's what you must be. If you feel a certain identity, that's what you are. And that sounds a little bit more to me like what St. Hildegard was talking about here when she discussed the Antichrist. He's saying that he will tear asunder family ties. We can see that happening now. Uh, you, you don't need to stay married. You, you don't. You can have a lover. You you have, as you said, follow your passion. Follow your passions. Follow your quote unquote bliss. We all know where that leads. <laughs> well, it's not just marriage, too. Think about children. If your parents don't get you, if they don't accept your new identity then you should go and, and go to someone who does accept you for, her re, for who you really are because your parents are being rigid and that's hurtful to you. Oh yes, there are whole movements on the internet to separate children from their parents, to, to rip the family off, to have the kid more attached to someone online who could care less about them, some cult online, some group, than to their own home. Granted, there are abusive homes and, and not every parent is great, but some of this is, is all manipulation and there's lots of money and there's lots of sickness behind these people on the internet trying to break up families. And then it says um, he will ally himself with kings. Once again, this is not uh, the janitor who's going to show up on the right. internet, the computer screens, the television this is someone who's going to be aligned with the powerful. That's been repeated several times. There's going to be kind of magic. Um, we're already so uh, amazed by the things that technology can do. Someone can feign magic and Satan can feign things that are rather preternatural or astonishing as had, well. I just had Zachary King on my radio show, and he is a former satanic high wizard, and I believe we ran the show here. And um, he discussed how he was addicted to magic, M-A-G-I-K, and when he was a Satanist, and he said, just like some people are addicted to porn and some people are addicted to alcohol or drugs, he said, I had an addiction for this because I would make this incantation and stuff would happen. And he discussed that in great depth. So what this is making sense on a higher level as I read this, we are enthralled by things that are like, ooh, ah. And I remember in the Bible when, when the scribes and Pharisees and the people said, show us a sign. And he said, you people seek a sign, but you don't want to, you know, you got the sign of Jonah here and you're not paying attention to it. And so the magic that I anticipate the Antichrist is doing is just so that it's like a firework show. Oh my gosh, this guy's amazing. Let's just, he must be someone special. And so that's what I think. I mean, I'm a sucker for a big, big show, big, show. And big fireworks. And so it's teaching me, Christine, keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes open. Don't fall for tricks. Don't fall for tricks. And that will be very deceptive because magic is a big thing and sorcery and we have that ingrained into kids minds that that's that's real and so that can be very very alluring and then so back to the fathers of the church and the the women as well the saints we have now hippolytus and he talks as you mentioned about the antichrist aping god copying god so Christ is a lion, so Antichrist is also a lion. Christ is a king, so Antichrist is also a king. Savior was manifested as a lamb, so he too in like manner will appear as a lamb, though within he is a wolf. We talked about how he's going to appear very holy and humble, at least at first, until right. he decides to just roar and take over and uh, persecute and kill and such. 
the Savior came into the world in circumcision, and he will come in the same manner. The Lord sent apostles from all the nations, and he in like manner will send false apostles. Could this potentially be happening now? False apostles all over the world who are saying, follow what we say, follow what we do. We're going to keep you safe. The Savior gathered together the sheep that were scattered abroad, and he in like manner will bring together a people that is scattered abroad. The Lord gave a seal to those who believed on him, and he will give one in like manner. So this tells us that things are going to be chaotic, scattered. People aren't going to feel like they have a community, like they can get together. And they're going to be brought together by this man. Hey, we can all come together. It's going to be okay. And then he gives a seal, which is the mark of the beast. We receive a seal, which is the cross of Christ. Yeah. So then we have another one. We have St. Irenaeus who gives us a detail. He says... As Christ, the Lord also declares, but when you shall see the abomination of desolation, which has been spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, let the readers understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee into the mountains, and he who is upon the housetop, let him not come down to take anything out of his house, for there shall be then great hardship, such as has not been from the beginning of the world until now, nor ever shall be. So when the Antichrist takes his position into power, which may be, as we spoke about earlier, some kind of influence or position in the church, then this is when the Holy Ones need to flee, go into a refuge, because then the martyrdoms will come, then the persecution will be fierce when he takes his, what he feels is his rightful place. It says, the Lord also spoke as follows to those who did not believe in him. I have come in my father's name and you have not received me. When another shall come in his own name, you will receive. So what St. Irenaeus is saying is, did we receive Jesus with enthusiasm or did we kill him <laughs> but when the antichrist comes we're not going to want to kill him we're not going to want to slaughter him we're going to say thank god you came you made everything okay you helped us buy and sell again you brought us together and in the future we'll also find that he comes to bring peace right before he destroys. So you were going to talk about Bridget of Sweden and what she has to say. Yes, St. Bridget was another saint who spoken of the Antichrist when she said, the time of the Antichrist will be near when the measure of injustice will overflow and when wickedness has grown to immense proportions, when the Christians love heresies and the unjust trample underfoot the servants of God, and tread spirituality and justice underfoot. This should be the sign that Antichrist shall come without delay. So, so many parts of that got me. We will love heresies, Christians will love heresies, and we're seeing a lot of that now. Right now there are um, priests and bishops and people, you know, kind of discussing, is this true church teaching or is this heresy? And so if we cling to things that the church has always taught are heretical, we, ne we need to be aware. And we're, again, for me, we're seeing stuff, if not happening now, it's, it's already percolating. It's starting to happen. There are heresies. People are calling many of the church leaders saying that they're saying things are heretical. And we have to discern. We have to discern truth. We have to go to the magisterium of the church. We have to look at the Bible. There's this, it's amazing, they they dovetail into one another, don't they? Blessed Aunt Catherine Emmerich saw, when the time of the reign of the Antichrist is near, a false religion will appear which will be opposed to the unity of God and his church. This will cause the greatest schism the world has ever known. So, all that we're seeing, if we see a schism happen in the church, that's going to be a tremendous sign that indeed the Antichrist is at work. Indeed, this time has come upon us. And so there are cracks, there are huge chasms opening up 
in the church right now, not just yes. in the faithful, but in the hierarchy. And so what is going on? She says, this will cause the greatest schism the world has ever known. The nearer the time of the end, the more the darkness of Satan will spread on earth, the greater will be the number of the children of corruption and the number of the just will correspondingly diminish. We're hearing this language today. We We're are. hearing this in, in the media. They're talking the word schism. They're saying the words heresies. They're, they're considering, and it, it, Pope Francis has recently mentioned schism. And so when you have the head of the church acknowledging that the potential exists, and that's aligning, aligning itself with what the saints have said, with what the, the scripture has said. All I know is keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes open. And so when it says the time of the end in this passage, once again, not the end of the world, not the second coming of Christ, but the end of an era, the end of an era, that is what we're headed towards. Not the end of time, not the culmination of everything with the second coming of Christ, but this Antichrist precedes the end. And Jesus talks about the end of an age. So Pope weighs in on this as well. By the early 20th century, Pope St. Pius X already saw society suffering a terrible sickness. And this is the kind of sickness that leads to a schism. The sickness would have to be very deep, right? Very great. <laughs> there has to be a deep, ugly infection for schism yeah. to happen. And he said this disease is, surprise, surprise, apostasy from God. And man putting himself in the place of God is the distinguishing mark of the Antichrist, raising himself above all that is called God. And do we not see that now? Who of us walking down the street, the average person walking down the street, are we to assume that whatever country they're in, whoever they are, that they have subsumed their will to the divine will, that they are completely devoid of self, that they wish to follow the commandments of God, that they are seeking to be humble, that they are not trying to get ahead, make themselves great, have their own opinions that go above or go against God's teachings. This is, this is rare, is it not? It is, and it's actually the opposite that we see in how people phrase it. It's like, well, that's not how my Jesus would respond, or my Jesus would find it okay to accept abortion or to accept this lifestyle. My Jesus. And that, in a sense, is making ourselves God. We are well, not the Yeah, I mean, that's, that's actually a step up above what most people at least in western countries would now say there there is no god christine there is no jesus you are following a fairy tale and what i'm teaching my children and what i learn in school has nothing to do with that so we we're not even at the level of of thinking there is a jesus who has anything to say at all so that's the great apostasy of faith so Yes, when it comes to recognizing that there is a battle and it's epic and it's happening now, that in, in our century it's happening, it was actually St. John Paul II. And yeah, not in the 80s, 70s, I believe. In, in 1976, in Philadelphia for the Eucharistic Congress, while still Cardinal Wojtyla, St. John Paul II mourned. We are now standing in the face of the greatest historical confrontation humanity has ever experienced. I do not think that the wide circle of the American society or the whole wide circle of the Christian community realizes fully. We are now facing the final confrontation between the church and the anti-church, between the gospel and the anti-gospel, between Christ and the anti-Christ. The confrontation lies within the plans of divine providence. It is therefore in God's plan, and it must be a trial with which the church must take up and face courageously, which encourages me. 
So here we are. We're going to move from this section in, of the show in which we talked about scripture and what some of the saints have said about this mysterious figure, the Antichrist, who may actually not be that mysterious now that we look at some of his attributes. Now, when we come back after this break, Christine and I are going to dive into some modern day mystics and what they allegedly have been told about who the Antichrist is and how we can recognize him. So this is Find Your Way Home on Radio Maria, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Find Your Way Home. I'm Christine with Christine. And as promised, we're going to talk about some modern day mystics. And the first one, just to give you some background. Now, when it comes to private revelation, these people allegedly hearing from heaven, no one is required to believe any of this. And yet, what they say is compelling and with all three of the people that Christine is going to introduce to us their prophecies things they've said in the past have actually come true so that alerts us to something going on as well as tested phenomena of the miraculous as well as the holiness of life that they are living. So God has not stopped speaking and sometimes he chooses the humble of heart through which to help the world. Private revelation is an ongoing charism in the church. So the first person we want to introduce to you is Luz de Maria de Bonilla. She is originally from Costa Rica, living in Argentina. And I've actually met her online and mm. I was so impressed by her love for God and her humility. She suffers the stigmata wounds often. And I said, how do you do that? I said, how do, how do you get up in the morning not knowing if you're going to start to bleed and suffer terribly? And she said, I'm in love. That was her answer. So oh. quite a beautiful, beautiful woman with holy kids, one of whom is on his way to becoming a priest and just a... Um, I believe, uh, a living saint in our midst. So tell us a bit about her. Well, I mean, when she was a child, she was receiving visits from her guardian angel, from Mary, and um, that she considered them companions and confidants. And I, she probably thought everybody had that friend as well. But she started, she got a miraculous healing in 1990, which came with a, a visit from the Blessed Mother. And that was the time that she had a public calling to share her experiences. Because before that, you know, she, well, she kept them in. But so then she started getting regular messages from the Blessed Mother. At first they were in the form of locutions. Then they were in actual visions where she would see our mother. And then uh, St. Michael the Archangel introduced her to our Lord in a vision. And then in time, Jesus and Mary would actually speak to her about the coming events and specifically the warning. So these messages went from, you know, being private to public. And so she's been given many prophecies. And I'm just going to mention one that's been fulfilled is she was told about the attack on the Twin Towers and announced that eight days in advance of it happening. There's so many other prophecies that she has foretold. But who is she? Why are we listening to her? Well, Father Jose Maria Fernandez Rojas, he's stayed at her side as her confessor from the very beginning of her locutions and visions. And she's got two priests that work with her permanently, showing that the church is really not looking at her nonchalantly. She, Her messages are audio recorded by two people, transcribed by a nun. And then these messages are all gathered into a book that's called Thy Kingdom Come. And on in 2017, she actually gained the imprimatur. And now also we have Gisela Cardia in Italy. Tell us a bit about her. So she, hers are kind of new. She, her visitations or her locutions, I should say, began in 2016, right after she visited Medjugorje. And she purchased a little statuette of our, our Blessed Mother, which began to weep blood. So she had written a book that was called in Camino con Maria, on the way of Mary. And that was granted a Neil Obstat by um, an Archbishop 
of the Polish translation of that book. So I could stop right there if you're if the Polish bishops there or the bishops themselves are saying this this woman should be seriously considered. Um, her messages converge with the prophetic consensus. And I think that's probably the most important, just like with Luz de Maria. Some of her prophetic messages appear to have already been fulfilled. Like September 19th, she was told to pray for China as the source of new airborne diseases. Mm. Third, we should consider her because her messages have frequently been accompanied by visible phenomena. She has had in her arm written on blood messages such as Mary Most Holy, and it's been studied, and some people said, well, you know, maybe it's demonic of origin, and exorcists in the church have said, no, that's highly unlikely, because they can't ever get demons to even utter her name during exorcisms. They can't stand, they hate our mother, and so they would be very unlikely to put messages on her arm. There's photographs of this. There's photographs of the phenomena. She's also gotten the stigmata, um, mm. and so just so many things. One of the other things is there is video of solar phenomena in the presence of multiple witnesses during a prayer at her apparition site. And it was similar to the dancing sun in Fatima of 1917. And these kind of things just can't be faked by humans. So again, this is why Gisela Cardia is taken so seriously as well. And on the screen there, you'll see a page. The pages that I'm showing these messages in the second half of the show come from the website countdowntothekingdom.com, which features mystics of our day and ones that can be taken seriously, we believe. And so the next one we'd like to share with you is Francine Béraud. She's known as the daughter of yes to Jesus. And she's a, born in a Catholic family, 13 kids, mother of three. She started getting her locutions in 2001, just before her husband died in 2001. She's written books that are, I'm going to give you the English uh, name. It's called Love for All My Children, Jesus. It's become some of the best known uh, contemporary private revelations. Um, and... They've been translated into several languages. Her locutions also, like Gisela and Luz de Maria, converge strongly with the prophetic consensus. So again, we're hearing these voices and they're saying similar stuff. But more importantly is her messages are consistent with our early church fathers, such as which Christine just read, Augustine um, and others. And she met with Cardinal Mark Willette in Quebec, who blessed her and told her to continue with her missions. So so this is a lot to this this message is is very long it's actually a compilation on this countdown page that features francine and it goes into the mark of the beast which we'll cover in another show but i want to highlight this paragraph in which jesus says through her through my son paul what concerns you the non-believers came out of his mouth the great apostasy when men will no longer believe in anything, the false Christ will present himself as the elected one. He will avail himself of his power and will seat himself upon Peter's throne in my sanctuary. There we go again. It is you. This is so convicting. I, I'm taking this personally right now. It is you, without your realizing it, who have permitted his entry into my church. For his plan was to seduce you. As long as there was faith within you, he did not find that the moment was favorable. Now that you have lost faith, he no longer worries about his victory over me, the Son of God. It is through your refusal to believe in the church that this is happening. And to believe in the true church, the magisterial teachings, the catechism, what we find in scripture. You will not be able to escape all that will happen. The church will be persecuted. I will be denied. I who am the church. My presence will be trampled. Perhaps his presence in the Eucharist will be trampled. This is something we need to look out for. You will not be able to avail yourselves of the right to adhere to my holy church, which is faithful to my gospel, my word. They will want to excommunicate you for treason. You will not be able to show yourselves as my faithful servants for all those who will not 
adore the false, Christ will be considered traitors. Even now we're seeing a separation. The powers that be are saying you're good and you're not. We're seeing things like that already be introduced into the world. You will be against the mass of the unfaithful who will have turned to idolatry. That is saying that most people will turn to idolatry. You will not be able to fight on your own. I will be with you. Do not fear for your lives. Whoever loses it will be in my Father's kingdom. We talked about this, the martyrdom Mm -hmm. of the saints. If you lose your life for God and you do not follow the ways and the dictates and the seemingly seeming comfort and the food and the buying and selling and everything and the, the false peace that the Antichrist gives you, and it means you lose your life for it, you will be in your mm-hmm. Father's kingdom. He will welcome you with open arms. That's awesome. So speaking to this connection between our faith or lack of faith and the power or lack of power of the Antichrist, St. Michael the Archangel speaks through Lusta Maria de Bonilla and he says, People of God, you are losing your serenity, your reason, the axis within you that ought to keep you focused on divine work and action. And instantly you fall like the Pharisees, allowing all kinds of filth and insults toward your neighbor to come out of your mouth. Wears of masks, you need to convert now before daylight fades and darkness becomes the master of desolation. Now this is a message on February 22nd, 2021. This is recent. You have surrendered humanity's destiny into demonic hands by supporting unnatural laws that offend the divine heart. Faithful Catholics know exactly what those laws are. You accept whatever reaches you without thinking about it. Your normal work and way of life have been curtailed in order to prepare you for the public appearance of the Antichrist. Wow. Yeah. I know that, the, look at the world, our normal work and way of life have been curtailed in order to prepare us for the public appearance of the Antichrist. People of God, the elite have been governing the whole of humanity behind the scenes. Now they have ceased to be a myth for the majority and are appearing before the face of all people. So faces that we see are part of the elite plan connected to the antichrist and they are enforcing inflicting certain power certain dictates that everyone in the world knows about at this time demonstrating that economic power has been leading humanity at will so throw in their weight around determining disparate allowances of freedom, etc. One of the lines that you just read that Luz de Maria passed on to us was your normal work and way of life have been curtailed in order to prepare you for the public appearance of the Antichrist. If there's so many people right now that are saying, well, when things get back to normal, when they get back to normal, and what this really speaks to is that it's not going to get back to normal. So if our work life, if our our daily lives have been curtailed. Be alert, like the gospel said. Let the reader understand. That's what it says to me, and I'm a language person, so um, we need to we need to keep on our toes. So yes, and another message on August 29th, 2021 read: Beloved children, this generation must prepare. It needs to be catechized so that it will not be lost. The wicked son of perdition is already in action. He is not sending his henchmen as in the past, but he himself is setting about extending his tentacles over confused and delirious humanity. It is this generation that is experiencing moments of pain when this is being fulfilled before its eyes. Brother will betray brother to death and a father his child and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name. 
but the one who endures to the end will be saved. And that came from Matthew 10, verses 21 and 22. And so our Blessed Mother continues, Children, at this moment there is mistrust in homes, in workplaces, among families. This is already happening without any reason and will become more pronounced. Lastly, she says, Humanity is heading towards the point where they will leave you without freedom, unable to move or to think for yourselves, and humanity will consent to everything in order to subsist. That's as powerful as to me, Christine. I think the world is feeling that in some yeah. way, shape, or form. Everyone on earth, if they're at all dialed in, to what the powers that be are doing is feeling some of that and it's going to get more intense that there is this is saying that this passage is something that the antichrist is initiating that he is pitting people against each other even within families and that it's going to come to the point of betrayal unto death so this is going to be a trick people so if we're pitted against one another, what Our Lady is saying is that you haven't been given a valid reason to do this. This is right. not coming from God. This is not coming from Jesus. He did not say, I really need you to betray and, and separate from one another. So something to be aware of for sure. Well, and we're seeing all these families. I mean, you and I know of husbands and wives who are on different sides of these current issues that we're facing, uh, dividing. One believes one thing and one believes the other and they can't talk and they're having stress. And and it's people are not visiting their moms and dads because the mom and dad believe one thing about these current issues and the person might believe another. And so that's what the Blessed Mother was saying through this message. Like you just said, Christine, there's no reason for that, but yet the division is just there and it's growing. It's growing wow. rapidly. And so yeah. we have Gisela Cardia receiving a message from Our Lady. This is May 12, 2021. Beloved children, soon a man will come who will be praised by the powerful of all nations, but he will be the Antichrist. This time is now near. Persecution will begin in all parts of the world, but do not fear because I will always be with you to protect you. And then another powerful message through Gisela Cardia, where we have Our Lady saying, my daughter, you must tell your brothers and sisters not to abandon the faith. Once again, the world might be abandoning it. Maybe Don't people in it. the hierarchy might be abandoning it. Maybe they might be replacing it for a gospel of health, as we see. <laughs> Cling to it, cling to it. You will have to forgive one another because when the time comes, you will need to be ready. So forgiveness is a prerequisite for what's going to happen. Soon the time will be ripe for the entrance of the Antichrist. He will be a man very close to the church. Hmm. He will be the mediator of peace during the war. So many of these mystics and Jesus himself says that in Matthew that there will be times of war, and but it will not yet be the end. You will see famine, you will see war, you will see tribulation, but it will not yet be the end. So, But what he's saying is that war will happen, unfortunately. So that is mentioned here as well. He will be the mediator of peace during the war. So he'll help cause the war, undoubtedly. So he comes and he causes all the problems, by the way, or many of them, in order to be the great unifier, the great peacekeeper, the one who provides the food, the help, the assistance, the community, the new religion. Just do what he says. But he, remember, he's not going to tell you that he was all part of this war happening in the first place. So, he will be the mediator of peace during the war, and then you will understand that you must never look into his eyes. What does that mean? That means he's powerful with evil, very deceptive, very mesmerizing. You will want 
Part of you as a human being will be lured to want to believe him, to want to hope that what he's saying is true, to want to avoid going into a refuge or being martyred or losing food. You'll want, you'll want to think that what he's saying is the goodness that he says that it is. If you look into his eyes, if I look into his eyes, we might be fooled. We need to protect ourselves. And where will his eyes be? On a screen. He has been manipulating all of us to be in front of a screen. And it's been pronounced with COVID. You must do your work on a screen. Your kid must do their schooling on a screen. You must have a device to be able to get from here to there. We are going to be linked to his eyes and that is his plan. So turn everything off. We've already yes. done that in our family, by the way. We don't watch TV. We don't look at the screens. It's, it keeps us so much happier and so much um, less influenced by propaganda and at peace. Mm -hmm. Do not be deceived by his loving manner. Ah, that tells us something else. This, this, sanct, this odor, <laughs> stench of sanctity is more like what he'll have. Do not be deceived by his loving manner, my daughter. All this will last for a short time, so be strong and be lights burning for the world. Communal prayer will help you. Do not isolate yourselves. What does that mean? The Antichrist wants us to be isolated. But always be in communion with your brothers and sisters. That's always been the case. There's strength in collective prayer, is there not? There's strength in community. We can support each other, but we're going to have to forgive one another. And we're going to have to somehow tolerate each other's differences. Is, right in order to be yeah. together because part of us being so divided has to do with that lack of forgiveness and difference of opinion and we'll have to put aside a lot of differences a lot of differences of opinion of what's going on to pray together because that's the most important thing well christine too if we isolate and we have so you're watching this video and you you believe what we believe right then you keep it to yourself that doesn't help because right here it is said that we must stay, we must not isolate, we must talk. So how are you going to know with whom you can talk, with whom, whom you can share? You have to start opening up a little now and finding out, you know, spreading the word. I am having a group of people over at my house to consecrate and to discuss what are we going to do when all of this happens. And there is a whole group of us, 20 or 30 of us that I talk to in my circles. So there's this balance, I believe, between you want to be careful what you say, but you also want to speak the truth and discern, you know, just be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove, because I have found that the Lord has created a great community around me, at least here, that we're all going to rely on each other for as things get harder and darker we have community and we can we can re remain right-minded as best as possible with the grace of the holy spirit and that's a great segue into the last message that we have time for and this is one that comes from Luz de Maria, St. Michael the Archangel spoke this to her on April 18th 2021 and here's what St. Michael said. What do you lack, children of the Most High? Trust in God in order to find it. Faith leads you to know God. But knowledge without trust is dead. Faith without trust in God is empty. You are concerned with preparing physical shelters. Okay, people who believe that there's a time when Christians aren't going to be safe are preparing refuges with wells, with some food, with some way of sustenance and helping one another. And this in and of itself is a good thing if one is called to it. But listen to this. St. Michael says, you are concerned with preparing physical shelters without first deciding to change your lives. Oh. You are not converted and yet you want to go to a refuge to protect yourselves. Where is your faith? No, children of God, you will not be able to protect yourself in a refuge without having converted, even if you do so at the last minute. You need to grow interiorly. So this is a call. I, I feel very struck in the heart by this. 
that once again, it's all about sanctity. There is no safety in the Lord without holiness. There is no comfort, true comfort without holiness. The, the great martyrs, the ones who shed their blood for the church, were the safest ones, the ones who were safest in God. So let us really rethink what safety truly means, because safety has to do with our relationship with God and where we would end up in eternity. We can try to be very physically safe here, but we may not make it to heaven. So what's the point? So once again, to confess, to pray the rosary, to forgive, to basically follow God in the divine will, to learn what the church's teachings are, because should there come a schism, we're going to be taught some other teachings that may align with what we would like the truth to be, but what it is not. That will be the greatest apostasy that the world has ever known. So are we prepared for that? Or have we accept compromises and said, you know, I don't really believe that church teaching. I don't really believe that one. That leaves us vulnerable. So to continue with the message, it says, you are not softening your hearts. The stone of pride and human folly weighs more heavily on most of you. Thinking only of yourselves, of what affects you personally, leads you to fall into the abyss of the ego from which you will not come out unless you put your brothers and sisters before yourselves. That's the gospel, right? Pray, children of God, pray. What has been announced is being fulfilled, happening in real time. And what you believe is far away is closer than you think. Humanity has stopped believing in God. It believes that it does not need God. Poor, spiritually illiterate creatures who, due to arrogance and believing in what is worldly rather than divine. We're seeing that in the church right now. More belief in what is worldly than divine are walking away from salvation. This is huge, huge. People who've left the church may very well be simply throwing their eternal life in heaven away. My goodness. The great powers are competing and preparing to bring the revelations to fulfillment. Do not forget that when humanity finds itself in chaos, the wicked one will appear. The one whom you must banish from the life of each one of you. And for this, you must be converted, convinced, and strengthened in faith. There's our marching orders right there. Yes. Pray. Pray that your brothers and sisters who are far from the Most Holy Trinity would draw near, repent, and convert. Pray. Pray for the Church of Christ, which will make a surprising pronouncement. Here we are, my brothers and sisters. Christine and I believe we are at a critical moment in history. We've received our marching orders. We know what to do. With faith, we can conquer all. We don't need to be afraid of life. We don't need to be afraid of death. If we love God and neighbor, and we're living in the divine will as best we can, and we are availing ourselves of what the church has to offer, the sacraments, the Bible, the catechism, the magisterial teachings, study what they are. Please don't just throw them away because by throwing them away, you're giving crumbs, maybe even an entire meal to the Antichrist. Don't do that. And for those of you that are able, go to mass as often as you can. You may not feel that you have the words, you may not feel that you have the courage, you may not feel that you have the strength, but every time you take our Lord's body and you put it in yours, your his DNA becomes your DNA. There's something that will physically change in you. You feel him transforming you. Let him do so. And even if you don't physically feel it, know that he's transforming you and armoring you up. The mass is the best weapon you have. Just use it while we can. Amen. And for those of you who can no longer go to Mass, our heart goes out to you. That may become us tomorrow. 
do spiritual communions look up what that means and you will receive him he will come to you because he's not going to leave us orphans he's always going to be with us and should the true church go underground we'll go underground with him to keep the faith alive the most important place for the faith to be kept alive in the days ahead is in the hearts of the faithful so we thank you for joining us in this attempt to be that remnant of faith in the world, that remnant that goes forward in faith and hope and love no matter what may happen, and that remnant that goes forward without fear because there are those who've gone before us who've done this well, and we can do it well too. Yes, we can. We can. And so we wish to give you encouragement we wish to let you know that we're in solidarity with you and to reach out. Don't isolate yourself. Try to find community where you can. Forgive all offenses and cling to your Lord with all your might. And may you find your way home. God bless you. <laughs>